Hi, Eric here with 30 by 40 Design Workshop. Today we're going to be talking about material marriages and why some materials just belong together. We'll begin by talking about concrete and wood. Cool gray punctuated by a warm wood, this combination of engineered and natural materials holds a special appeal for many. In this bath, the process by which each material was created is expressed clearly. The concrete was formed and cast in place. Upon deeper inspection, the grain of the plywood forms that held the concrete mix can be seen along with a strict geometric pattern of holes. The holes represent the locations where metal form ties were used to keep the wall from bowing outward during the pouring and curing. In contrast, in both color and scale, the Douglas fir has been milled into boards and installed in tight horizontal bands. The fir is a counterpoint to the cool gray concrete, and while it's been used on only one wall, its visual weight is significant. I particularly like how the subtle graining apparent in the concrete references the wood wall. Here, a medium brown wood on the ceiling lends the space a warm tone. When someone is seated, a room ceiling has a large impact on the visual perception of a space, which means a smaller amount of wood can be used on the ceiling to counterbalance the large mass of concrete walls and floor. This space highlights a common design trick architects use when deciding how to use a material combination. By assigning very specific materials to specific surfaces, walls, ceilings, and floors, we develop a logic about their application. In this case, the ceiling planes are wood, and the solid exterior walls are concrete. We could even push the idea to the extreme by saying all horizontal planes here are wood, all vertical planes are concrete, all interior walls are board-formed concrete, and all exterior walls are waxed concrete. You'll see this technique used throughout this presentation. Now why this marriage works? The character of a raw material like concrete is accentuated when used near a more tailored material such as wood. And because gray is a neutral tone, it complements the tones found in natural woods. Steel and wood. Like concrete, steel is an engineered material. But unlike concrete, it appears light and very precise, a result of its fabrication process. Steel is often combined with wood for both aesthetic and practical reasons. In this case, the wood gives the ceiling plane a warm brown tone, contrasting the cooled gray industrial steel structure. Practically speaking, wood allows us an efficient means for fastening common building components, which are made of wood, to the steel, and also a means for insulating it. While extremely strong and able to span great distances, steel is also an excellent conductor of heat. This means we have to keep it from transferring heat between the interior and exterior of a building. Wood, meanwhile, is a poor conductor and is often seen attached to steel for this reason. Fastened to a steel support structure, wood provides a cavity within which we apply insulation. Here, the architects have overlaid a wood quilt on the supporting steel structure. The steel beams carry the distributed roof loads from the wood skin above. Because wood isn't able to span the great distances that steel can, its structural interval is smaller, and it's often used in a layered manner that creates a quilted effect. Exposing the structure to view is a wonderfully authentic expression of the structural and thermal concept. Why this marriage works? Contrasting coloration calls attention to the functional duties of each component while displaying their inherent qualities, natural graining and machined precision. Glass and paint. The combination of a highly saturated paint and a single sheet of floor to ceiling clear glass appears effortless, understated and forceful. In small spaces, this treatment can be used very effectively. Consider how this hallway would feel if glass were replaced by a painted wall or if there were a busy combination of guardrail, newel post and balusters. The painted stair element, along with the entry door and trim, are the dominant elements in this compressed space. There's simply not enough visual room for competing objects, and the glazing insertion reflects this. Why this marriage works? Glass allows deeply saturated paint colors to advance, and is a classically modern complement to any color palette. Next up, white on white. My entire first year of architecture school involved compositional exercises done using only one material, white museum board. There's a reason architects begin their training this way. It forces a focus on form, hierarchy, solid, and void. That's why white on white is a favorite of many architects and designers. In this monochromatic bathroom, the primary forces at work are form, texture, and sheen. Neutral color palettes accentuate form above all else. Subtle variations in texture and luster, from the dull matte of the floor tile to the gloss of the shower door, suggest a deeper understanding of what surfaces are made to be non-slip and what are made to shed water and be cleaned often. The soaking tub, the vessel sink, and the cantilevered vanity are read as singular sculpted objects. The natural light in this space emanates from an unseen skylight above, reflecting off white surfaces, which effectively become a large, luminous diffuser. Each of the materials of these simple forms, a cantilevered cabinet, shelves, an elemental freestanding bathtub, translucent glazing, off-white wall tile, 
white pebble floor, has an identity and a texture, yet none demands more attention than another. This allows for any, even the most minimal, accent of color to take center stage. Why this marriage works? White is a classic neutral color that highlights form. Now, white and wood. This union has a humbleness to it that I find really appealing. Natural wood tones can be used sparingly when paired with white surfaces. It requires surprisingly little wood to enliven a simple space. This particular expression, while apparently simple, is actually the result of a lot of careful construction work. Creating the reveals at the wall intersection of the treads and risers is a time-consuming detail, but the effect is that the stair appears to hover in space. In understated and utilitarian look, Simple white and wood can be used sparingly when the budget requires a pared-down palette of materials. The horizontal floor planes here are natural wood. Rising up, appearing to hover and cantilevered from the painted wood screen element, the natural wood treads are subject to the same rigor the architects applied to the overall composition. Why this marriage works? It's a simple, casual, and accessible combination. Wood tones highlight important elements, while the white ensures that the overall space remains bright and airy. Black and white. The dialogue here is one of contrast. The stair and cabinetry geometries are elemental, bold gestures. In this renovation, all the interior materials rendered in black represent new architectural interventions, while all of the white areas highlight the existing structure. The architect for this project has taken a highly mannered approach to the material selection, and it pertains to the finest of details. Space constraints inspired the material thickness of the new stair walls, 10 mm plate steel. After you subtract the width of the various spaces required and the necessary minimum stair width, the material selection becomes obvious. Why this marriage works? As in a simple black and white photograph, composition and contrast are capable of producing striking beauty. Brick and steel. Viewed from the exterior, the black and white home displays yet another material marriage that works both aesthetically and functionally. A recycled weathered brick facade contrasts the highly machined steel insertion and allows the salient qualities of each material to be revealed. Brick is often seen paired with steel because it can span window and door openings. The steel lintel, which makes this possible, in this case sits above the door and window and distributes the load from the wall above to the foundation. Brick's mottled tones contrast steel's crisp lines, precise machining, and solid tones. The imperfect viewed against the perfect. Why this material marriage works? Because bricks washed, mottled tones and imperfections contrast the chiseled, perfect lines of steel. Saturated, strong colors act as the shadow in a field of color. On to wood and stone. These two natural materials in almost any color and form play well together. Both materials exhibit natural veining and graining that can be used to accentuate movement in a space. In this example, the coursed stone creates an anchor for the stair. The horizontal coursing has a logic to it. Stacked bands of stone remind us of field stone walls, built course upon course. It feels proper because that's how stone walls are naturally constructed. The architects chose to use a more textured surface rather than a cut or machined face to create shadow and depth, and to recall stone's weight and origins. And I'll leave you with this final example, a hybrid of two of the previously discussed alliances. Almost monastic in nature, this space is completely defined by this material marriage. Valued by classical sculptors for its depth and luminous quality, the white marble appears monolithic, as if carved from a single block, a singular, monumental gesture, elevated to an altar-like position in the room. The contrasting wood wall lends the space warmth and brings out the white in the marble. This space represents how powerful a thoughtful combination of materials can be, how the materials can elevate and support each other in both simple and complex ways. Why this marriage works? When used together in ways that highlight their natural properties, wood, which is light and warm, and stone, which is massive and neutral, each enrich the other.